Hi, Vincent. This is Sophie. So I'm wondering, like, um, how easy is this, or if you have any suggestions if we want to move our career from China to here in the Silicon Valley? I'm sure it's not easy for many people. So I would like to hear you to share more on this. Yeah, I think uh, you and I have the same background, right? I was I was growing up over there as well. I only moved to the U.S. about five years ago, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think it's, it's ideal you, you first c come here to, to study. Um, going to a, a U.S. school is, is, will be very beneficial to have the networks, et cetera. And obviously, I would recommend Stanford, which is closer and uh, much more convenient. It's, it's the closest to Sand Hill Street, which is the street with all the VCs, uh, much easier to raise money. Um, I remember, so when, when I was studying over there, um, basically all the VCs come to, I was recommended to uh, Lightspeed by a classmate. Oh. And then uh, Lightspeed would ask all the classmates, hey, in your class, who do you think has some interesting ideas? So they always come to the class like that. I think that could be a very interesting first step. But having said that, I, I also saw a lot of uh, Chinese-born or international-born entrepreneurs start business directly. Israel is a good example. All the Israeli, Israeli companies are started right over there, but uh, they aim at have a global domination in the first step. So that's also, it, it's also doable. There's a company in China, uh, it's called, uh, I think it's called Lie, Lie Bao. So, th so yeah. they do the Clean Master that mm -hmm. has 600 million users. They're all based in China, and then the market is global. Like WebEx is, is done and uh, developed in China. Hulu, all of the engineers sits in China. So it's too doable. Thank you. Hi, Vincent. Hi. Um, I think what you're doing is amazing. Um, and I was just wondering, uh, how many companies, are, are you working with any companies that are in the entertainment sector? Um, mainly broadcast and television, because one thing I realized when I was working in, in England is that a lot of the broad broadcast companies are trying to figure out ways that they can market better. And obviously they have Netflix as a competitor and like all these other online streaming platforms. So right. for them, the main, main uh, kind of point of getting customers and getting leads is marketing and figuring out what's the best strategy and what works best. So is that an area you'd be going into? Yeah, that's a good question. So we, we will be going to the B2C space. So right now we focus a lot on B2B, mm -hmm. company selling to company, because we are very good in understanding how to analyze companies. Uh, but we just hired um, the, the guy uh, as our head of machine learning. He formerly was the first one that wrote the algorithm for Netflix on the Netflix recommendation engine. So he just joined us to lead our uh, machine learning practice. So that definitely will help us to go into the B2C space. Awesome. Also, I, I was wondering if I could speak to you later because I'm trying to get into the B2B market. So yeah. you'd be fantastic to talk definitely. to. As Thank long you. as you're not becoming our competitor, definitely willing to share. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi. Um, I'd also like to speak to you afterwards. Um, <laughs> preferably for <laughs> half an hour, um, but Great. you know. Uh, how did you understand your market when you just went in when you just started yeah so v very good question i think i think we didn't do good good job on understanding market from top down so i, I saw uh, two type of entrepreneurs one is bottom up right so they saw a need that they themselves wanted to solve and then they started a company around it this is the evergreen i would call evergreen version 1.0 i saw a need when i was working in private equity that i need to find companies and i started a company around it but the, the good part of that is you have full passion. You can work days and nights on it. But, but the, the cons for that is you never see what the big market is. And then we quickly failed because the market is not big enough. I also saw some entrepreneurs, they, they start top down. They have no passion about any industries. <laughs> they do the top down analysis. Like Jeff Bezos was, was one of the most successful entrepreneurs to do that approach. So you can read some of his books about uh, everything stores. So he basically analyzed every single industry and identified uh, the books and publishing industry is something that he want to disrupt because the market is very scattered, the market is very big, the market is very old school. So that was a very successful case over there. And um, what what do you think is stopping your clients from doing all of this by themselves? Yeah, that, that's pretty hard. Uh, all of the company can build CRM themselves too, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, it takes a lot of time. And data science is a hard thing. So we provide not only um, a very good machine learning tools, but also getting all the data. So as of today, uh, every single US company, European companies, uh, there's the average crawler behind it, analyzing with their website every single day. So that takes us about a year and a half to do so. And then the cloud infrastructure is pretty huge. Right? We spent three millions in cloud infrastructure last year. So for a small, now as a small client, you only need to pay us 50K, and then you get all the prediction services without worrying about the data, model, infrastructure, cloud computing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier. And one more question. 
Um, how did you acquire your first customer? Oh, that's pretty hard. Uh, like hustling a lot and uh, begging a lot as well. So the, our, our first customer is, is a company called Relate IQ, and um, it was uh, recently acquired by Salesforce for 400 million. So um, the, the first time when I knew Relate IQ, I got a friend working there, so that's why we go there. And then we, we definitely uh, hustle a lot to say, hey, use our software, we're gonna do here and there. They said, this is great, um, but the, the key thing to use our software is you need to give us your sales data. And, uh, and uh, Relate IQ doesn't want it to do so because it's chicken and egg. They're like, show me a prediction. And we're like, we, we have to see your data, and then we show a prediction. So on this part, we waited for three months. But once we see their data, we do a uh, very good job on that, and then getting the next cast customer is much easier. So, so one of the things we believe is sell before you build, right? I'm sure you're very familiar with the Lean Startup method. Um, don't build anything before you have three contracts in, the, in your pocket. Those contracts are not something that you say, hey, my, my cousin said uh, he's very interested to use, but really contract with the hard dollars and have people s to sign for it. All right, thanks. Hello, I'm Mo Jia. I'm also from China. Um, I want to dive in a little bit deeper um, in your hard period, basically, um, several months ago. I, I'm pretty sure at some point you're gonna, you'll probably lose hope in, in your, what you're doing already. Like, um, and maybe part of your team also got really frustrated, don't know right. what they're doing, things like that. I want to know how did you deal with the situation? How did you overcome that? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. So I think uh, startup is very much like a roller coaster. So you feel frustrated uh, once every two days. And then um, it's real experience. One day you feel like the company is, is going IPO. The second day you feel like, oh shit, the business is tanking. Um, so so well, what I did a couple of things. One is uh, I, I did a lot of meditation during that time period. So meditation really helps me to look truly um, inside versus outside. And then that helps me a lot. Um, and then the, the other thing that um, uh, I did a lot well, it's not, so let's say if you had a bad day, basically you just, sometime I just stop working and, and, and go home. I play a lot of video games, and that, and that distraction helps sometimes. And, but, but always, and every time when I had some uh, distraction, the next day when I wake up, it's all gone. So it's a new day, and, and you start fighting. So uh, exercising a lot as well. I, I like to do a lot of endurance sports, like swimming a long distance and running a long distance. I think that helps as well. That uh, really gives you more persistence. And because... I think a few days ago, Airbnb um, releases their uh, rejection letter by the first five investors, right, on, on May. I forgot the site. Uh, when, when you look at that situation, right, how, how can people believe that becomes Airbnb like five years after? So you have to keep persistent. And uh, having one dream is very important. One of the biggest dreams that I always have for 10 years is using uh, machine learning, using data mining to hopefully change the way how people function, change the way how business function. I was doing that all the time. So with that mission in mind, and uh, you might not, the, 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 the product you build might not be right, it's totally fine. The people you hire might not be right, it's totally okay. But as long as the vision you have, the, 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 the dream you have, um, you persist on it, I think one day it's gonna become true. For, our, for us, the, the vision is one day the artificial talent is gonna change the way how corporates make decisions. Um, it's definitely gonna happen. Whether it's because of everything we build it or because somewhere else, it depends, but uh, this big trend is there, and we want to be part of that. What about your team? How did you comfort them when they wanted to leave or got frustrated? Uh, so, so there are two types of team members. Uh, I think in the early days, most of the team members, they are like myself, right? They, they uh, sacrifice a lot. They like, come here with 10% of their paycheck, and then they work almost 24 hours a day. So for those guys, they will um, motivate themselves, so you don't need to worry too much. When a company grows bigger, there are definitely a lot of uh, people coming in that are employees. Right? They don't think in the longer term. Um, so for, for those, sometimes I, I, I feel like th there's someone saying being an entrepreneur uh, is very lonely, and which I agree. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, feelings and expressions that you cannot share to anyone else. Right? So sometimes when I feel sad, you can never say in the office, you can never even show it. Right? You just have to cry somewhere else, although I never cried. But, uh, but you, you have to keep it to yourself. And so that, that is very important. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Vincent. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, so I'm also interested in uh, machine learning and NLP. Um, but what strikes me about, what's very interesting to me about you is like you don't have a computer science background. Um, how, how did you go about creating the prototype 
Um, and what what algorithms did you use for your predictive analysis? Did you use Hadoop, um, right. R, or what technology did you use for that? Right. So so I uh, um, I don't have a CS degree, but I I have a my undergrad was in mathematics. So when I was in a math major, uh, fifty percent of my time was spent on uh, uh, software development. Mm -hmm. So so even like a long time ago, L'Oreal, um, all of their HR management system was developed by myself uh, in the early days. So I think with, with that background of CS, it helps a lot to build a prototype early on. Uh, when it comes to machine learning, uh, we don't use ours and we, we don't use MATLAB because those are the off-the-shelf tools, right? So we build the algorithms ourselves uh, using Python directly. And then on our backend is, is, of course, everything has to be on Hadoop because otherwise the scalability is a big issue. And uh, the database we use on Hive, I'm sure you might have heard of that. And also, we use a lot about called Storm and Spark. Those are the uh, the queuing system for you to do real time machine learning. So those type of things. Oh yeah. And so in terms of um, because my solution, I need a machine and a, a good understanding of machine learning right. and NLP. Right. Um, what would you recommend? And uh, which people would you recommend I I talk to to give me that understanding? Yeah, I, I think. Uh, an, I think uh, some headhunters will be able to help you to hire some co-founders in that space. And all, all the, the, the else is, uh, when, I, when I was back in school, I went to a lot of the, uh, uh, the, the, the parties, but, but I only go to the parties where uh, it's, it's a party for PhDs in like CS in Stanford. And that, that helps a lot to meet the people. I found one of my early, early co-founders in that party, and then he has been with us uh, since then. So he, he's been very, very helpful into these things. Thank you. Hi. In the early stages when you're looking to build out your platform and a lot of your revenue or projections for what you, when you talk to investors um, is contingent on actually building the platform and then talking to the B2B to determine of right. exactly how much value you can be to them. How do you look to transition through that phase as quickly as possible? Is it more a case of bootstrapping or do you need to just kind of develop some projections or some metrics to try and encourage the investors that this is what we expect to do for them and this is how long it's going to take? Yeah, I think it depends on the stage of when you raise money. In the angel round, uh, we raised about 1.6 million angel rounds as well, from, um, led by Sequoia and IDG Ventures. So in the angel round, they don't look at financial at all. And I, I remember one of our angel investors, I talked to him for 40 minutes and he invests uh, $1 million right after 40 minutes. I think the angel round is more about your passion to explain to him what's the vision and uh, why do you quit your job and quit all the, why do you forgive all the opportunity costs to do so? So that's, the, that's all what it needs. And then for the Series A round, it's more about have some minimum, minimum uh, proving point. So Series A investor, I don't think they're gonna look a lot about your financial projections because it's all, it's all fake, right? Because you don't have such a long operating history. Your financial history is, is short as well. But the thing you need to prove is the product market fit. You need to have a product, whether it's B2B or B2C. For B2C, it's more about you have the active users in a, in a relatively growing scale. For B2B, is you're gonna have one or two customers not only using it, but you have to have them pay because it's very easy to have your brother-in-law to use your products for free, but have somebody pay $20,000 and sign a contract, that helps a lot. We only use two contracts to show it to the investor and raise our Series A rounds. And then for Series B rounds, and it's, it's even harder. For Series B rounds, it's not about bullshitting, it's not about market proven, it's about the, the execution capability, right? You need to show a strong team. So as of today, we have our VP of Finance and VP of Marketing and VP of Sales and Director of Customer Success in major, major uh, functions. You need to have the, what they call the gray hair, right? You need to have the gray hair in charge of all of those. And also you need to have decent revenue. And then the, the, the B round is more looking at Scalability, can you take it from 10 million revenue to 100 million revenue? So I think those are the three different stages and what uh, investors are looking at, it's very different. In terms of time, how long was it between the different rounds, the C to the B? Yeah, so I, I think the longest time is, is from uh, angel to series A because it really depends on how long it takes to uh, prove the market. So and for then yourself? Yeah, for us, uh, from angel round to series A, it takes about two years. And from series A, and uh, we, we are, um, very soon that we will be uh, finishing our Series B round, it will be pretty big. And then I think it takes about 11 months. So for, for A and B, it sometimes is much shorter. Cool. Thank you.